Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Lulu's Way. I'm so glad you're here. We have moved on from Prescott. Prescott. Somebody corrected me that it's pronounced Prescott. <laughs> it looks like Prescott, but Prescott. We headed up north and we are currently in Williams. And we found a dispersed camping area. The way we got lucky finding it was because we found the little spots on Iovalander, but the, off of Route 40, there was a street that went down to the spots and the street had a name. So we had a street to put in. So we put that street name in and it brought us to that street. So that's how that worked out. But thank you everybody for all your suggestions on ways to find um, dispersed camping. Thank you for all the advice. I appreciate it. And eventually we'll get it. But we just found a spot and, uh, you know, we couldn't go too far in because the roads were like these big, huge gaping holes. And I was like, I don't know if my van's going to go in there. I don't know if it's going to get out of there. So um, there would be a way to get around it. But, you know, we found this little loop, like right when you come in, right past this gate, you have to open this gate and it's all uh, forest uh, forest roads. And, um, we just found this little loop. So we just came right around the loop. But since we got here, it's been pouring, pouring buckets. So we have just hunkered down each of us in our own vans. And actually we're both really enjoying it. We've been texting each other and she's just, she's like, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm having a great time. You know, it's very muddy, very, very muddy out, but the next two days, bright sunshine, so that will be great. All the mud will dry up and we just, we just going to stay here. I don't want to tour Williams. I don't even want to know anything about Williams. <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely. We're going to stay here tomorrow morning, open up. It's going to be chilly tonight. It's going to be chilly. I think it's, it's, uh, the warm jammies are in order tonight. I've already, I've already put socks on my feet. <laughs> Sorry, Tootsie's a little chilly. So tomorrow it's going to be in the 70s. So it's low 40s, high 70s. So it'll be in the 40s tonight, but that's manageable with, you know, dressed appropriately. It's manageable. Um, I won't even get out my warm sleeping bag. I will when we get to Grand Canyon because every night will be in the 30s. One night says 29. So it's going to be chilly. And, but that sleeping bag, it's, a, it's, it's excellent. It's excellent. It's like one of those mummy bags. It's a 30 degree bag. And with the warm jammies, big fat socks in there. I'll be good. So, um, low twenties, that's when I would pull out the, um, electric mattress pad. There's just no reason for me to pull that out for almost 30. I can manage a 30. Uh, but so tomorrow it will be wonderful, sunny in seventies, low seventies. So, um, yeah, she wants to get her whole van reorganized. She needs to kind of go through her things and figure it all out and just to better organize it. And, um, we're going to do a van tour. I'm going to do a van tour of her van, uh, once she has everything in order. Um, so we're just enjoying some alone time today, which is really great, but I want to share two really nice stories today. You know, people are good. People are good. I was in Walmart parking lot this morning. We woke up in Walmart. We parked off to the side where the, uh, garden center is. That's where all the campers were. Uh, in the morning we pulled over, drove into the main parking lot and, uh, we went in, we had to get some supplies cause we're going to be here for three days. We just both needed some things, use the restroom, wash your face with water, running water and soap on your hands just as a, is a gift when you do, when you get a chance to do it. Um, so while I was out in the parking lot and I had the back doors of my van open, as I was just putting some groceries in my cooler and just getting order, this guy pulls up behind me and he gets out of his car. He's probably my age. I'd say he's my age. And he says, um, wow, nice van in there. I said, oh, thanks. And he says, oh, I've been thinking about doing van life. And uh, he said, would you mind if I, if I got a better look? I was like, come on over, right? So he comes over. So I gave him the 10 cent tour, you know, and he was thrilled. So he's thinking about doing it full time and he's, um, wants to get something bigger 
I said, you know, if I was full time, I'd probably get something bigger too. But this is really working for me, you know. And he just uh, he liked my ideas, and he was just uh, he told me he's ex military. He is really thinking about going full time. Doesn't even have a van yet. He's been watching the videos, watching videos, and I remember that stage, you know. So anyway, uh, so that was that, and then um, I went just went back to doing my thing with the van. And he uh, comes over to me. He says, here, I want to give you this. He gives me this. It's a piece of amethyst. Look at that. It's a big chunk of amethyst. And he said to me, I want you to keep this in your van because it brings, um, it brings protection. It's protection. I was like, oh my goodness. I said, you are the sweetest person. I said, thank you so much. And um, he's like, oh, you're welcome. And he just had a big smile on his face. And I was like, can I give you a hug? And he was like, yeah. So I just hugged him. I was just like, you know something? People are so good. And you're my angel today. Thank you so much. So now I have this beautiful, beautiful piece of amethyst to add to the little things in my van. I think I'm going to put a piece of the alien tape on it and just put it down somewhere, and then I know it won't it won't move. Beautiful. So then I Googled it. I Googled the amethyst, and it says this. <clears throat> it says... A violet stone, amethyst, the violet stone that's used to promote spiritual growth and attracting abundance. Amethyst has been known for centuries for its ability to bring good luck and make dreams come true. It is thought to be a powerful stone of protection and it can help protect the wearer from negative energies. That's what he gave me. And he knew about that. And that's why he keeps it in his car. And he gave it to me. I'm just truly blessed and grateful to have um, crossed paths with that man today. And another story I have is that I was getting a signal on my dashboard that said that the air pressure in my right front tire was low. So I didn't know if it had to do with the altitude, like if the pressure in my tires was a wonky or something, but I said, let me just go to an air machine and just see if it has the right PSI in it. So I went to the first one, out of order. I drive another few miles, go to the another one, put my card in, nothing happens. It's just all blank. I was like, okay. So then I went to a third one and it was working. So I took it took my card. So now I took off the little thing and I took this big the big hose thing and I stuck it on and I was trying to like screw it on. But it wouldn't screw on and it was like I could hear the hissing the hissing of the air and I'm like to be honest with you I've never used one at a gas station I have one in my garage the little compressor things I have and I've done it and it screws in it screws in and then you it puts the air in this one I was turning it it wouldn't screw in it wouldn't screw in and all the time that I'm trying to screw it in I'm hearing this air hiss I'm like is air going in or is air going out all of a sudden, my tie is getting lower. Oh, it's like almost flat. I was like, all right, I don't know what I'm doing. Either that or this thing doesn't work. I mean, I should be able to do it. <laughs> like, I know how it works. So I just looked over at the gas station. There was one truck getting gas, one man. And I just went right over to him. And I was like, excuse me, excuse me, can you help me? And he was like, yeah, what's wrong? I was like, I'm trying to put air in my tire and I took air out of my tire. He comes over. So he did exactly what I did. And he couldn't get it to screw on. And more air was coming out of the tire. He was like, this thing is just not working right. You know, I hope you can get your money back here. I said, well, what am I going to do? I got a flat tire. I said, oh, I just remembered. Under, remember that under the floor, I have all that storage for things I will hardly ever need. Well, under there is a little compressor that came with my van because my van did not come with a spare tire. No spare tire. Compressor. They give you a compressor. 
I said, I have a compressor. He was like, you do? I was like, yeah. And I said, the only reason I stopped to get air at the gas station is because I've never used it and I didn't feel like figuring it out, but I'll let me get it. So I went under, under I reached, took, had to take some few things out, but I got it. So I gave him the thing. He set the whole thing up. We got it going. It filled the tire up and I learned how to use it. So um, he showed me how to use it. It was very easy. I should have never been concerned about learning how to use it because it's simple. Um, but he got my tire filled up. He had me go in and check and make sure when I started my car that it didn't say that anymore. And he was just a nice, nice, nice man. And, you know, he told me he was having a hard time getting off the ground because he has a bad knee. He said he had spine surgery and he was just kind of like a mess. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Right. So I what I did was I came over the other side of the car and let him have privacy while he was getting himself off the ground because he had to like hold on to my side mirror and he's holding on trying to pull himself up. I was like, you know something? You're an angel. You, 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 I said, did you, did you, um, did you pay for your gas yet? Let me pay for the gas that you filled your car. He said, don't even think about that. And I totally get it because I know that he made my day by helping me. And I know that I made his day by giving him an opportunity to be helpful because nothing feels better than helping somebody else. I wasn't going to take it that away from him and try to say, no, let me know. Here's 20. Here's the, you know, I was like, I know he's basking in the glory of serving others. And I provided that for him. I said, I am just so grateful for your help. And uh, I said, can I give you a hug? <laughs> and he's like, sure. So I was giving him the biggest hug. And I was like, you're an angel that God sent to me. Thank you so much. And um, so that was just beautiful. Then I got on the road and drove into the mud. <laughs> I'm not stuck in the mud though, so that's good. This is a very nice area. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, over the next couple of days, I'm going to do, I'm going to put together like a montage of just pictures, little snippets, little videos, but we're not going to be doing much. I want, we both want to just stay put. I don't want to sightsee. We just want to stay put and just be and just sit in a chair and read a book. And um, the service here is good. It's good. It's not great, but it's good. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I'll be able to upload a video. So right now it's Sunday. Uh, we're going to be here Monday and Tuesday, and then Wednesday morning, we're going to leave to go to the Grand Canyon. And perhaps when I'm on my way to the Grand Canyon is when I'll upload this video. So it will be a, it will be uh, one video of dispersed camping in Williams. Yeah. And I'll just take some pictures and just chill out. One other story that I want to tell you is that um, perhaps many of you know Jan from Butterfly Tracks. Um, she is doing this big, huge uh, road trip caravan from Route 1, furthest point north, it's Fort Kent, Maine, all the way to Key West, Florida. So she's doing like a caravan, um, and she's got people doing it with her. So I knew she'd be coming through Mass, and... Uh, so I told her, if you, if you're coming through mass and you and your people need a place to camp, use my driveway because I have a big ass driveway. I can fit probably eight cars in my driveway and, um, I'm not home though. I would love to be home and host you, but I can't do that because I'm in Arizona, but I want you to truly feel comfortable telling me when you're in this area, if you. You can all go in the house and take showers. You can all go in and do laundry. You can all plug in your power stations and charge them up. And uh, so she said, oh, thank you for the offer. Now, this was a long time ago. Well, didn't she text me the other day and say, we'd like to come in your driveway if, 
if the office is still available. I was like, yes. So I called my son. I had him move the cars out of the driveway, let the ladies have the driveway. So I said, all the ladies are coming. I had given my son the heads up that this might happen. And um, so I told him, the ladies are coming and uh, they don't want to come inside. They've already done all their laundry. They've already done everything, showers and everything. So they didn't need to come inside. So I gave her the address and she pulled in and they slept in my driveway, five of them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, what a community. You know, what a community. It's just so great. And so they just all felt nice and cozy and safe and comfy. And they just spent the night there and off they went to continue their journey the next morning. Like I said, I wish I could have been there to host them. I would have liked to have made them a big dinner and um, uh, just socialized with them. It would have been really nice, but that's not, the timing was off. But I just think that's amazing. I love it. I love this community. So, so I'm going to say bye for now and uh, enjoy this montage of just three days spent in dispersed campsite, just in the middle of nowhere.
Hi. Here I am again. It was chilly. Now it's warm. So what did I do today? So we woke, we woke up this morning at the dispersed campsite, quiet, peaceful, comfortable, relaxing. It was just such a joy. So directly across the street from the dispersed camping area is a lake. It was called Kaibob, K-A-I-B-O-B, Kaibob Lake. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. It's in Williams, Arizona. So we decided to go sit by the lake today. So uh, we just went right across the street. We had to open the big gate, leave the dispersed camping area, went across the street, uh, probably about a mile in was the lake. Just sat by the lake. I'm gonna throw in a few pictures right here. I left there and I needed to go have my uh, tire repaired. What happened was my air was low. Remember I told you the story about the guy that helped me put air on the tire? Well, um, it got a little low. I got the, the, the light again. So there's a nail in it. I ran over a nail. What are you going to do? That's why it's been a slow leak. The nail has been keeping it plugged up, but not 100%. So it's been drivable, thank goodness. So I said, let me go get it fixed. So I just looked online, found a tire repair place in Williams. When I gave a call and I was like, I need a tire. I need a plug put in a tire. Um, can anyone take care of that today? And he said, yep, come on over anytime before four. So off I went. I pulled in. I was parked there for literally 30 seconds. And they already had the, the jack jacking up my car, took the tire off, brought it in. Ten minutes later, they come out, put it on, $25 fixed. Yes. So now I'm at a grocery store in uh, Williams, Arizona, and I just got a few things. And I thought I would uh, have you join me while I unpack. So I've been struggling a tiny bit with the electricity, although today is a very, very, very sunny day. And I'm actually doing some decent collecting today. But I still can't get myself up. I can't get over 50%. I, I just, I'm, I've been in touch with Blue Eddie. It's just, it's being discussed. I have all the electricity I need for my needs. I can't use the pressure cooker. I can use the tea kettle once a day. Um, and I've been making ice, but I've been buying ice just as a backup. Because if like, if I end up getting really low and I have a cloudy day, I'm screwed. So I would rather just have a, a bag of ice in here. So everything's nice and cool in here because there's ice in my ice packs. So that's good. And I've got these ice packs that are cold, 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 too. So let's see if I can put this bag of ice. It might be too much ice. Oh, here we go. I'll lay this on its side. Okay. 
Okay. And this is in a bag that should not leak. All right, so there's that ice right in the middle. Keeping things cold. So now what I bought was, I bought some boneless, skinless, chicken thighs, organic. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick an ice pack right in with them just to keep that kind of stuff extra, extra cold. Let me put that right here. And I bought something I haven't bought in years. Shrimp. I haven't bought shrimp in years. And I just saw it and I was just like, I feel like getting shrimp. So I got it. I'm going to put that right there on the ice. I got some asparagus. Delicious asparagus. And I got some zucchinis, zucchini doodles. Now, one last thing. Oh, two last things. I got cauliflower and I got some old fashioned crunchy organic peanut butter. Another thing I don't buy very often. And I just wanted it. So I got it. So that's going to go in my pantry. Oh, and I got some, some more napkins. I get the extra absorbent ones. They're like the fancy schmancy ones. Because I need them to be sturdy. Because I, I clean everything with them. Anyway, I spent $53. I've just been really enjoying my food and my cooking and and everything. There we go. Thank you, God, for this cooler. I'm telling you. I tell you. You know, I'll tell you why um, I, 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 um, I was thinking about my electrical issues and my, my, my inability to collect an overabundance of electricity and how sometimes it might seem like I'm a little uh, obsessed with it. Sometimes I feel like that when I'm traveling with my friend because like I'll be parked somewhere, we'll be parked together, we're sitting on the lake and I can see that the shade just came over my van. And there's a sunny spot right next to it. And I go and move my van. I go move it. Because I need to be in the sun. And, and she has not said one thing. She's just a darling. She hasn't said like, my God, you're freaking crazy with this. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But I'm just thinking like, it appears like I'm like nuts. <laughs> anyway, I'm in a church parking lot right now. It's right across the street from the grocery store. I decided to come over to the church and have a seat and uh, I'm about to do my uh, book study club in a few minutes. Let's see if I can fit my, I think I can fit my peanut butter right in here. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. There we go. Um, so I'm going to do my book study club in a church parking lot. How perfect is that? Let's see. I have 40 more minutes before I, before the book study club. If you don't know about the book study club, it's a Lulu's Way book study club. And we're studying the um, Wayne Dyer, the Tao Te Ching, change your thoughts, change your life. Look on my live videos and you'll see where we announced it a few months ago. It's never too late to hop in. Beautiful. It's a beautiful group of people. Um, so the reason I'm obsessed with my electric and why my electric is so important to me is because I need to make ice. I need to make ice because I need to put ice in this cooler. 
I need a cooler this big because this is the food that I eat that it holds. And it all comes down to the food that I eat is the most important thing in my entire day. It just is because it's the reason that I have this beautiful life. It's the, the reason I feel healthy. It's the reason I can do anything. Oh my God, I can do anything. And it's because I'm just nourishing myself. Like when I think about like what I eat in a day, the variety of different things that I put in my body every day, and I just do my best to know that it's clean food, it's cooked, it's cooked to perfection, in my opinion, because of course, however I like it is perfect for me. So it's cooked just the way I like it, delicious, nutritious, and it makes me alive. It makes me, it keeps me trim, it keeps me fit, it keeps me healthy. So what, all of that circles back to my electricity. So I need to take care of this. I'm not, I'm not one that's like, oh, it's no big deal. I don't, if I, you know, I only just charge my phone. No, I don't just charge my phone. I charge a freezer and, and to run a freezer 24 seven takes electricity. Um, it doesn't just trickle. Like if it was, a, if I, if it was set on fridge, but if I, when I, <laughs> when I get this all sorted out and get everything I need, people on this Blue Eddy forum, I've been talking to people on this Blue Eddy forum, and they're talking about some kind of a device I should get that you plug it in to the Blue Eddy, and the other end, you plug in like the solar panels in the car, and you should be able to charge from the car and the solar panels at the same time. You see, I can't do that. I have to set it on car or solar panels. I have to put that switch up or the switch down. So this device is $200. To spend $200 on a device that would give me the, the capability of charging while I drive and solar from the car and solar. I mean, how valuable is that? <laughs> how valuable is that? You know? So I'm going to look into that. Not right now. Not now. I'm going to just wing it. And, uh, I'm, and I know that once I get um, off this mountain, because <laughs> like we're in the mountains, we're in the mountains of um, Arizona. Where we are is big, tall trees. So it's really hard to get sun, you know, and I'm always trying to like, I'm even in our, in our site at the um, dispersed campsite, even there, I'm moving my van all day. Let me move it over a few feet, move, it, move back a few feet because I'm dodging the trees because I want to get the sun. So I know once we start heading west and south, it's going to be like this. It's, there's no forests, you know, it's all desert. I will have full sun as long as the sun is out, which is typically all the time. I'll have full sun all the time. That's what I want to see what happens with my, with my unit. I want to see what kind of charging goes on when I have the optimal conditions from morning till night, when I can see what can happen from sunrise to sunset with optimal conditions. That's what I want to see. And I've, I've haven't seen that yet. I don't, I just don't know, you know, um, even when I'm driving, I'm in and out, in and out. You know, you go under a bridge, it goes off. You come out, it goes on. So it's an on and off thing. Anything, you know, if there's trees. So it's not even like, even when you're driving, even when it seems like you're in the open road, there's things that interfere with it and just turn it on and off. Right now I'm in the blaring sun. I'm grateful that this church parking lot has full sun. So I'm going to go do a little bit of studying for my book club, and then I'm going to attend my meeting with all my people. It's such a joyful, joyful time of the week. We talk about things that matter. Today, the discussion is on oneness, all of oneness, how we're all one. Just It was just an interesting verse, and we all get to share on it and take turns and just listen to what everybody else heard in the reading. 
and how they interpreted it. And it's just, it's so good. And then we always end every session with a dance. So we have a DJ, we have a, we have a, a an assigned DJ who's assumed the position. She does a fantastic job. She figured out how to do this from Zoom and, and play a song and she takes requests and we just all dance. You look at the, the Zoom screen and you see all the squares of all the people and everyone's just dancing. It's like, we just, that's how we end every session. It's just uh, beautiful, beautiful food for the soul, food for the soul. You know, you have to nourish. I nourish myself physically. Oh, I've already discussed that, why my electricity is so important to me. It circles right back to my, my physical well-being, which is, puts me in a, puts me in a, a, a position to receive um, spiritual messages, um, take care of my emotional health. Because, you know, we're just, we're not just physical. You know, we get the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, we're just this, this package. It's a very complex, amazing, spectacular package of just goodness. So bye for now from Williams, Arizona.